Uh, thank you for uh, giving uh, me an opportunity to be here and thank you for conducting this uh, conference. It's great to be um, among the community for a change uh, in this uh, times, different times. So we, I was thinking, you know, what should I be speaking about? Should I generally talk about uh, the technology, how open EBS could be helpful uh, for cloud native developers in this artist in general, or should we really talk about uh, the more appealing topic? Uh, how can we help everyone to do remote work in a better way and also help uh, do the cost savings <clears throat> in their daily lives for the cloud native developers? So that's the topic. Before we go, uh, I just wanted to take a couple of minutes and talk about uh, what we do. I'm Uma Mukara, co-founder, CEO of my data. I manage operations uh, of our uh, large SaaS platform uh, and also DevOps. And uh, I'm part of um, the two open source projects called Open EBS. Uh, you may be knowing about it, many of you. Also, another project, uh, Litmus. Uh, Open EBS is cloud native uh, data management project, and Litmus is chaos engineering for Kubernetes. And about our company, we are a Bay Area startup, and uh, we are uh, the number one private company uh, in terms of contributing to CNCF. Uh, so, we are a very active um, company in terms of uh, open source contributions to CNCF and uh, we have a large community of uh, users that also is helping to get that uh, with respect to cloud native data management. So what we do is we are a data agility company and uh, we try to use Kubernetes itself to deliver data management. Uh, so, or we try to convert Kubernetes into data layer. That's what we say. So you try to do use Kubernetes as is, but you try to solve the data management issues in terms of provisioning data operations, migration, backup, use cases, all that stuff. So the whole idea is how can we uh, help SREs do their job better when it comes to data? That's what my data is. Today, uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, what's our new normal uh, in the last uh, three to four weeks or six weeks, how we used to work before versus now, what has changed and uh, what can we do about it and how can we help uh, through CNCF and open source projects. And um, so remote work has become the new normal. We'll talk about that. And uh, we'll also talk about uh, the use cases uh, which we have actually implemented at MyData to a large extent uh, of this talk uh, is uh, in production in MyData. That's how we treat. Then we'll just say, you know, how can you actually start? So I'm not going to talk really about open EBS um, details, but rather how can you probably start looking at open EBS and why you should look at open EBS if, if remote working is an issue for you or reducing costs is one of uh, the goals for you in this difficult times. So with that, uh, let's look at what's the new normal for cloud native world. Cloud native world here really, I mean, if you have something to do with Kubernetes, in general, you're in that world, right? So before COVID-19, uh, this is how we are all. There are a lot of people who are working from home. This is not new, but uh, even if you do work from home, uh, to some extent, you all go to office and then we're all used to uh, working with team members in a particular way. And um, you're contributing to open source, but you still have a certain setup, everything uh, done at office or your data center, and then you have your own network. And then basically you have your team, right? The new normal is really the opposite, right? And I would say uh, work at office is 10% and work from home is 90%. Well, uh, many of us may be thinking that um, this is only a very short period, uh, but uh, practically uh, this actually introduces a new behavior into our working patterns. 
and uh, as the world is expecting to get um, better at tackling this uh, the new tragedy uh, at least what i envision is by end of year uh, this year we would still be 50% of our workforce would still be at home right so what happens to the productivity what happens to our cost and you know how can we do all this better is there a positive angle to this entire thing is probably what i'm going to talk about in the next uh, 20 minutes so it really is bringing about a new concept called home office um so you have the opportunity to build better stuff uh, using open ebs or some of the technologies and uh, you can actually convert uh, your home office into a more productive zone and uh, we are all most of us are developers or sres and uh, how does it uh this new scenario impact as in terms of the cost right so most of us are <clears throat> uh, having our dev environment apart from laptops you have your dev environment um, mostly on the on prem um data center that's your office or even private cloud or on cloud and that's how your costs are right and uh, with this um, new normal you cannot have this data center access anymore of course you might have some vpn but uh, your default choice seem to be that hey you know let's actually spin up my kubernetes clusters that i want to have on cloud um well that's easy fortunately we have uh, matured cloud um operators that can help us do that and uh, the only main difference i would say is it increases your cloud spend and there are some other challenges um, in moving everything to your cloud which i'll talk about uh, in a second <clears throat> but uh, the main thing that we all need to remember is hey what's the main difference in terms of using cloud before kubernetes and uh, with kubernetes now is you have this problem of cloud stickiness already i'm using a certain cloud technology and then i'm uh, i'm developing into that technology and then i'm stuck right and developing two kubernetes really solves that problem of you can just move around so as you as a default choice if you move to cloud just be careful that you know it's not just the cost that you are incurring more but also about uh, are you actually fixing yourself to a particular technology that is only available on that particular cloud um kubernetes really solves that problem for all stateless applications but the stateful application the data is still uh, gravity um of uh, to the cloud so what happens if you continue to use um if you don't use the right solution um your cloud i mean you have more dependency of cloud and you may not be able to switch back quickly to your other environments um it's not as simple as i'm using my on prem environment i just moved to cloud in two days and i worked on there for about 9 months now i need to go back it might it might not be few days or a week to come back it might be a very difficult choice for you to come back right and uh, that also increases your cloud spend um uh, at much higher rate than what you would uh, imagine i think i have a question okay that is another question is not on this subject so uh let me move on to the new challenges so that we are facing right um the whole this new concept of hybrid cloud and multi cloud environments is to take advantage of uh different cloud uh, technologies and also the kubernetes being able to provide a substrate that is common across all this cloud and on prem so you have uh, a 100% um flexibility in designing your infrastructure your environments the way you want but uh, probably now because of this work from home thing i am about to move everything into cloud i basically am reversing what i did uh, in the last few years and um, and because of hybrid cloud there was flexibility and a lot of cost saving 
but uh, no, am I actually reversing it? Is there any quick thing that I can put together, right? And uh, as I said, more importantly, just to summarize, it's not just about the cost, but I should be able to come back uh, to a technology that is that is uh, in line with my multi-cloud or hybrid cloud technology. So what are the new possible solutions, right? So you need to be really careful uh, about cloud lock-in. Uh, so make sure that you pick a solution that your data is not gravitated towards the cloud itself. And um, you have a choice to do a lot of stuff with the Kubernetes from your home itself, right? And one of the major challenges in this is about uh, the data. What is the most important thing that you can get on cloud very easily? Um, well, I can use EKS or GKE, and it's very easy to spin up. And uh, that has become as easy as using it on cloud on your laptop or home office as well. And uh, nowadays, you know, you can use Minikube and other Kubeadium and many other tools uh, in open source, which are easy to set up Kubernetes at your home office. So that's not a big, big challenge. The real big challenge is probably about data and uh, how do I actually get an equivalent data solution that's as good as EBS or GPD in my home office because I don't want to rewrite all my scripts that are actually working for a given storage class. So we need to pick up a solution uh, in terms of the data for your home office. And uh, the other one is the stateful apps. Um, I mean, we are all in the phase of developing the apps right now. Uh, most of the IT enterprises are spending a lot of uh, time and money uh, on converting that monolith into the, the Kubernetes and native apps or writing new technologies on this one. So CI, CD pipelines are a major investment. And then if you move to cloud, all of this from your enterprise, uh, um, there could be some cost um, implications. So make sure you choose the low cost architecture on cloud. That's one of the things that you take care of. And then uh, just like the previous talk was talking about, it's all in open source free. There are a lot of freely available solutions uh, that you might want to search for, um, where you might be surprised that there are already some solutions which you can just click a button and subscribe and then you, you have it right there. Um, you need not actually pay money for. Um, I'll be talking some of it uh, in this uh, next step of 10, 20 minutes. So with that, uh, how do we solve some of these issues? Uh, open EBS and Director. Open EBS is the open source project. Direct is, is our uh, monitoring tool and SaaS platform to help with uh, the stateful applications data management. So with these two technologies, you can actually set up uh, an EBS or GPD equivalent infrastructure on your home Kubernetes clusters very, very easily. And um, you, by using these two uh, technologies, you can actually bring out up to, or sometimes at least a 50% in majority of uh, the cost um, by 50% in majority of the CA scenarios. And um, by going into this, you are actually mimicking your hybrid cloud at your home office, right? Uh, so whatever works from your on-prem to cloud now should work from your home office to cloud. So that's the idea of uh, setting up. Uh, I'm just working from home, but I have an on-prem at home, right? And I can set it up for myself. I don't need like big DevOps team uh, to be able to do it. Of course, it's not going to be as big as that. It just needs to serve only your needs. So it should be uh, easy enough for you to do it uh, if you know Kubernetes um, and Open EBS. And then uh, Director actually gives you a free tools uh, in terms of, um, you know, monitoring, management, logging. Um, you just need to subscribe and it's all free. Uh, you should be able to get them. You don't need to set up uh, a very deep Kubernetes uh, based monitoring solution at uh, your home office. You just get that for free. And then with this, you actually have no problem of cloud lock-in. You can go back um, and that's the main problem that OpenEBS solves. 
um, you have no need to worry about cloud uh, data. It's an open source technology, CNCF project. Um, the data can be moved from any cloud to any cloud or any Kubernetes cloud to uh, cluster to another cluster. So what are the use cases that uh, I just want to touch upon in this is um, how do you set up the persistent storage solutions similar to EBS and GPD uh, at your home office and then get your uh, cost down by about 90%, right? And uh, if you are using some production apps uh, on databases, depending on the databases, uh, like RDS on AWS, uh, how could you actually reduce the cost um, and still be enterprise feature uh, equivalent? And uh, if you are moving or planning to do a CI um, solution onto a cloud, how can you actually uh, have it more cost effective? And I'll talk about how we actually solved and got up to 90% cost reduction. We used to burn a lot, uh, but uh, that has changed. And then the other one is uh, a lot of us are using uh, in our production environments uh, or staging environments, NFS storage, where you have a lot of data that multiple applications are using and uh, you might be incurring a good amount of costs uh, to get your uh, storage um, uh, working. So if you want to do that at your home office or uh, get it on cloud, you can still optimize and get about 40% of it. So before I go and talk about that, let me talk a little bit about open EBS and what was uh, the main problem that we are solving. So Kubernetes has converted most of uh, the stuff into microservices, but data, data is still, you know, you've got CSI, you've got uh, good plugins um, to access storage and provision storage, but the storage itself is like probably external. It's all going into monolith and that's the gravity problem. And you still need some big management team in terms of DevOps teams to control and manage the storage. And with Open EBS, we actually break that monolith into a microservice. So with Open EBS, you have CAS, container attached storage, where each volume itself is a storage controller. It's always sticking to your microservice. So just like you manage your app, you're managing your storage. So that's the fundamental design difference that uh, Open EBS brings in into Kubernetes management. And uh, using Kubernetes itself, uh, we manage all these pods, the storage uh, objects, and then um, by way of doing that, you are actually not managing a, a big different storage system, but you're actually managing another Kubernetes object. And um, we call it as a declarative data plane. Uh, for your uh, applications, and that's built on Kubernetes itself. So if you have Kubernetes, um, you have some storage disks on your worker nodes, and you got all the EBS equivalent that you need right there on Kubernetes. So uh, let me introduce uh, Open EBS project. This is the GitHub, mm -hmm. and uh, we are on also now on Kubernetes uh, Slack channel. The channel name is Open EBS. The community is quite big. Um, we have seen a lot of uh, uh, new clusters coming up, uh, you know, up to thousand or more than thousand clusters that are being deployed every week. Um, so that really shows that it's quite large in terms of usage and uh, there's the reactive channel. So you can feel free to use this uh, in staging and production at your home office, it's quite stable. And the 1.0 release was done last year, so it's uh, about eight to nine months, and then in production in hundreds of enterprises. So it's quite a mature project uh, that you can bank on. And uh, it is, as I mentioned, it is on, uh, it's a container attached storage architecture. So we have an article on, as a, an architecture preview of what this CAS is. And uh, there are multiple storage, solutions that follow CAS, but OpenEBS is the most popular and open source one. And uh, we it uses Kubernetes itself for uh, as a control plane of storage and also for data management. So that's the uh, big deal. And uh, using this CAS and open architecture, you can actually move your stateful application, including the data from any cluster to any cluster, uh, even across the cloud boundaries, so that makes it actually a totally anti-cloud lock-in. 
So what is it that we are doing to enable all of us um, team members uh, to work from home at uh, my data, right? So we are a remote first company. So we have uh, the policies that, hey, we're a global company. You know, our team is really not just the members that we pay for, but it is the community. So we should be able to work uh, well with them. So we need not meet every day. You, you had to meet your team members on the community all the time. So we are a remote uh, first company. So that's been our uh, case. So that helped actually adjust our uh, staff to um, this new situation of work from home. So we have done this stuff, you know, the last year itself, and we have changed some of our deployments um, in order to enable us uh, being more productive while working from home. And uh, we learned a few stuff, and that's probably what I'm sharing here uh, so that it could be helpful for others. So we did uh, move away from some of this RDS and uh, we changed our CI environment to use OpenEBS. And we also were using some of the other storage engines of OpenEBS. Then we moved to local PV, got some big databases and saved lots of money. And uh, we also advocated this to our community users. And we see, you know, if you come on to our channel, you'll see, yeah, I'm working on my home lab. Right, and I'm having some issues. So why do you, you know, why didn't why did you actually start with that home lab? No, I think with Open EBS I can build an EBS uh, in my home itself, so I can avoid cloud and then you know to start um, working on my application. So this is great. So that's been the most common need for somebody to start uh, with Open EBS. So it's actually very very helpful. So let's talk about. Um, the use cases, so we got about four use cases. So how do you actually set up your persistent storage at a home office and say some dollars? So uh, all you need is a real physical server and then you must be putting in some Zen or VMware ESXi, which are free stacks uh, that um, will put in your virtualization environments. And um, then all you have is a lot of VMs that you want uh, based on the applications that you need, you can size your VMs. And then you need to pick up your underlying disks and then make them available to some VMs. You need not put uh, uh, all uh, disks to all the VMs uh, as worker nodes, right? So because Kubernetes uh, has got uh, this uh, stateless and stateful applications, not everybody needs um, the storage. So you can actually specify this uh, storage available storage onto only some of these worker nodes. And then you you're using open, install OpenEBS on your Kubernetes and then create some storage pool. And that really acts as your EBS or GPD equivalent layer. All you need to have after that is just create storage classes. And then just like cloud provider has given you an EBS storage class, now you have your own storage class, you just ask the storage and it is coming right there, right? And uh, in terms of features, it's got all uh, equivalent uh, um, functionality of a storage volume that you get in cloud uh, in terms of uh, being highly available, uh, replication, snapshot clones, thin provisioning, resize, and it's all CSI compliant. Um, you can actually move your applications from this cluster, uh, which is at your home office, to on-prem or in the cloud without changing anything you're in your application, including the data, right? So that's, that's the real advantage. The benefits is you have your cloud at home right now, uh, the entire data persistence layer, and the cost is just uh, the physical servers, rest is free. Um, whatever you want to do here, the even support is available on Kubernetes Slack. Um, there's about 2,000 people uh, in that Slack channel, so you should be able to get good support. And uh, by some estimates, you should be able to save around 90% of your cost of using uh, cloud for this persistent needs. So that's the first use case. So please do try it out um, uh, if that's useful. And then for moving the applications from one cluster to another cluster, this is also free. It's available on um, director.mydata.io. Um, you can actually 
schedule some data migration from one cluster to another cluster and then move it whenever you want. So you are not stuck to your home office once uh, you know you start writing your data and then build some good solution, you can just move it onto any other Kubernetes cluster as long as you have a connectivity to that cluster. So the benefits is it enables from to work uh, enables you to work from home and saves a lot of things. And first of all, it's easy and um, it's open and it's free. So why don't you what's stopping uh, some of us to go and take a look at it? The other one is well, that's good, uh, but um, that's good for my non-critical applications. What happens? If I have some real business application, now I'm trying to move on to cloud, or actually I'm on cloud, and then I'm using this uh, uh, the database service uh, layer that a cloud provider is giving, and it works well, but um, now I need to save some money, right? And uh, we used to have the same problem, and then ended up spending uh, a lot of money um, every month, and uh, we wanted to move on uh, to open EBS, uh, First reason is uh, we wanted to dog food our own technology. And uh, second reason is really to uh, save some costs and, um, um, and then try these things out. So uh, this is how a typical, uh, I've taken some numbers from some of the surprise lists that are there on AWS. So for your RDS that is running, it's outside your Kubernetes cluster and you connect your application to that RDS IP whenever you want some database needs. And uh, typical cost of that um, is about uh, $6,000 uh, per month for a reasonably uh, low latency, high performing database. And uh, that's the profile of RDS. You can set up the same thing uh, with, uh, well, uh, provision resources, uh, the cost of three nodes at 24 core and with reasonable a large memory will cost about uh, that much, two thousand dollars in EBS. And uh, if you, because it is in production, you can get some licenses. Um, that's also quite low uh, compared to everyone else. And uh, for about half the cost, you can actually have an RDS equivalent um, with Open EBS on any cloud. Um, so that's the second use case. The benefits are really about um, you get an equal featured database uh, for much lower cost. And as you, if you're sharing or your data is big, then you can actually use the thin provisioning feature of uh, uh, open EBS to not really provision all the storage right away, but you can uh, do it only when needed. So one of the major uh, attributes um, of cost savings on the cloud with respect to data storage is thin provisioning, as many of you know. Um, most or all of the cloud providers charge you based on the provision capacity and not based on what you actually use it, right? So that's the biggest difference uh, in terms of cost savings when you use open EBS thin provisioning features. Um, the third one is about um, for CI. Uh, I'm building a good CI uh, platform on my cloud, um, on the cloud, and uh, what are the main challenges? Let's look at uh, some of uh, this reasonably large CI um, pipelines. And typically, you spin up a pipeline, you need to do a lot of testing. So you may spin up uh, uh, about 200 pods, you need some persistent volume. So each application may have more than one volume. So let's assume that you have about uh, 400 PVs that you need uh, in this entire life cycle of two to three hours of uh, the pipeline. And uh, the volumes are about 500 you need to get. And even if most of the time they're all very small in a pipeline, but you still provision about five TB for about two hours, right? And uh, you just provision 10 GB, but you may not actually use it because you, know, you just write some data and you may not be provisioning, using all the data all the time. So in typical pipelines, you use about 20% in those few hours of what you provision. So the challenge here is you've got a lot of hundreds, small, hundreds of small uh, PVs where capacity is not being used, but uh, you are 
being charged for the entire thing. So how can they avoid? So that's one challenge. The other one is uh, many a times, you know, there's a developer environment and pipelines fail and you expect them to fail more often in dev than in production. So if I provision 500 PVs and then I don't clean them up, uh, nobody's going to show any mercy. They're all just charged. And this is what I had seen in our own operations where why are we spending so much money? Um, well, I think for last one week, we are not cleaned up uh, the volumes that we have provisioned. These are all 5 GB, 10 GB volumes, but it could go into tens of thousands of dollars. If you clean them up. So what's the solution? The solution is really uh, build this entire um, EBS layer with open EBS layer on top of EBS uh, or GPD. And then uh, you can only provision much less than what's needed. And still your applications can have um, a larger capacity that you want. And um, thin provisioning will help you actually uh, provision only 20% and act as, a, as if you have four times, 10 times bigger capacity. And if at all you need to provision more, you can enable the provisioning on the fly on demand. So, um, and also open EBS supports snaps clones uh, natively to Kubernetes. So your pipelines are actually more efficient. So that's one way to save costs and increase efficiency. The other one is very, very similar to CI, but uh, NFS also has the same problem, right? The challenges are you've got large data. This is not like ephemeral or short living, but almost like forever the data will be there, but your data keeps growing uh, at a certain rate. Uh, let's say 5% every week. And then you're not increasing 5% every week, your storage. Typically what people do is, hey, you know, I want to keep my uh, underlying um, EBS volumes at uh, about 60% uh, max capacity. So whenever they reach 60 or 70, you add another 100 GP or 200 GB, but you don't use all that 100, 200 GP all the time. So you're getting charged for that uh, the moment you're provision. So what we have observed is on NFS systems, um, the average usage is about 50 to 60%, and uh, about uh, 40 to 50% of the storage is um, uh, is uh, unused and but being charged. Let me see. Okay, it's about time check. I got about five minutes. I think I'm almost at the end. And uh, the solution is again use open EBS to do thin provisioning and uh, save up to 40% of the cost. And um, that one. So I want to do a, another quick analysis of the cost that we did and how we saved money, right? So, and this is how on uh, GKE or GCP, how uh, typically the cost analysis uh, that went in. We used to use uh, some cloud storage and then a lot of GPD PDs. And then we used to have a lot of worker nodes and GKE nodes. And we were burning about uh, $80,000. Um, and then we actually reduced that uh, to um, a lot after actually using open EBS underneath. So we thin provisioned uh, the persistent storage as well as cloud storage to get around 80 to 90% of the reduction using thin provisioning. And uh, there was another major factor uh, that, um, that uh, contributed to the savings is uh, we moved from some of our other uh, storage engines, uh, which uh, provide a lot of good features like replication and snapshotting, but uh, some of your database applications need not have them because they have them built in into that uh, databases itself. So we moved to local PV and uh, because of uh, local PV uh, usage, you get the same performance uh, by giving more uh, CPU availability to the other services. So instead of running your Kafka with uh, uh, five replica, uh, five replication pods, you, you can now run it with two or just one, right? Because you're using the local storage and it's all good. So just by moving to local PV, open EBS local PV, which has an auto provisioner and other management capabilities associated with local disk, you can actually save a lot of remote, uh, sorry, a lot of computing resources and that attributed to uh, some savings. 
and overall it's about 50 to 68 percent of mix so this is a one of our own experience that happened towards the end of last year and um, this would be helpful for you guys uh, to do this and uh, i'll share the slides and um, probably we can chat on open images channels uh, on for more details on how we can help each other so getting started uh, all you need to do is open ebs is free uh, you can get it from uh, open ebs um, github and to get uh, the director and other good utilities uh, the free tools you can just sign up at my data and director also has uh, open ebs uh, provisioning and all within it so the best way is just to sign up yourself at uh, my data io and then start getting that so the moment you sign up to director you get uh, instantaneous access to prometheus elasticsearch topology views and then you have you can connect your cluster and then install open ebs set up open ebs and then start managing your data we have this help center here, help at my data. I will be uh, to go and look at it to get yourself started. So the first steps really is if you don't want your cluster to be connected to a SaaS platform, you can just download it and it's a Kubernetes application. You can install it on your uh, on-prem uh, home office cluster as well if you want. And it will give you all this nice tools about um, uh, metrics, logging, and then this DMAS, which you can use to move your application from one cluster to another cluster. So set up your director, connect your cluster, and then using director, you can install open EBS, provision storage, set up your EBS at home, and then start having fun. Um, so that's as simple as a uh, few steps to get yourself started with uh, EBS at home. So uh, that's about it. Uh, I think I can take some questions if there are any. And uh, uh, as I said, director is free and uh, you can have all these features just with a sign up. And uh, Open ABS is also an open source project. Uh, so you, hopefully you will use some of these technologies and make yourself feel better at home, working from home, and also at the same time saving some dollars for your company or yourself. Thank you very much. Uh, with that, uh, I'll see if there are some questions. Um,